Good morning, Saratoga. We're here on the backside, and it's an honor to be with Mr. Jimmy Toner, also known as JJ Toner. Thank you for having us, Jimmy. And the best place to start is at the beginning. So tell me how you got involved with the horses. Well, actually, it's a long story. My cousin worked at the track mm -hmm. as a bartender. Okay. So naturally, he met a lot of trainers. Mm -hmm. So an intramedic, actually, then, you know, then I started to hang out in the summer times, uh, working in the summer, you know, and then eventually just went on my own after that. Sure, yeah. and I believe you hold the record for being the youngest trainer to saddle a horse with Battle Empress. How did that come about? Well, actually, I was an assistant trainer at the time, and mm -hmm. when I came to New York, I had to fill out a license, and mm -hmm. at the time, the trainer had to be there. Mm -hmm. So the trainer wasn't there, so they said, you have to go on a program. So that's how that all came about. Okay. And that was only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Just so, a couple. Just a couple of years ago, <laughs> so that's fine. And yeah. how, did it, how did it feel when Battle Empress crossed the finish oh, line and won? It was pretty neat. I'd say it was pretty neat, yes. Yeah, Were neat. you hooked after that? Oh, I was hooked. I was hooked before that, I was hooked after that. And then, not too long after that, you were drafted into the military and spent a year in Korea. That's correct. And thank you so much for your service. Well, That's thank you incredible. again. incredible. And, you know, when you came back from overseas, yes. did you know that you were going to stay in the horses? Was that your plan? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I thought that was my, you know, uh, direction I wanted to go in life. I mean, it was like either that or uh, work for the city. You know, my whole mm -hmm. family works for the sanitation department, so I knew I was good for a job there. <laughs> But I figured, you know what, after you get started in this business or something to travel, the excite, it's different. Exactly. So uh, I said, no, that's definitely what I wanted to do. What you wanted to do. Yeah. And did you spend, uh, did you go right away into training on your own? No, I worked for, well, after I came back, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to work in Ocala, breaking yearlings for a while for Meadowbrook Farm. And then they, in turn, gave me some horses and got me started. So that from there, I went to actually spent some time in Jersey and then eventually worked my way back up to New York. And you got involved in a partnership with John Phillips and you guys have had success for years and years. Tell me a little bit about how that came about. Well, actually, I had a horse for a, a fellow called Arthur Sealbinder, mm -hmm. who was a partner with John Phillips with a, with a horse. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they had a horse in a sale called Tribulation. Mm -hmm. So Arthur bought the horse back. It was a buyback. He bought the horse back. And then John said, okay, I'll take a piece of the horse. And he said, okay, fine. He said, all right, so who are you going to give the horse to? And he said, well, I'm going to give him to Jimmy. He said, Jimmy and I do well. We'll get along good together and, you know, be fine. So John's famous last words were, but he's a claiming trainer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later, is my claim to fame is with John Phillips <laughs> with all his good horses. So it's worked out well. And there have been a number of good horses. Yes, there have. I believe yeah. Wonder Again yes. was owned by yeah, Phillips. Phillips. You're yes. correct. So tell me a little bit about Wonder Again and what all she did. Well, she won the Diana here. She won the Lake Placid here. Um, uh, she was a, a nervous type of a filly. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was claustrophobic, nervous, and... Um, one of my favorite stories is that when she raced here, we ran in the uh, the Diana actually, and uh, had an interview a couple of days before the race, and they said, you know, I said the filly likes some giving the ground, a little soft ground. So okay, fine. So by the time we left here, we got to the paddock and started drizzling, and so we got to the paddock and started raining a little bit, and everybody went inside. So I went inside to start walking her around. And you could see her start fretting and get nervous. I said, everyone, get her out, get her out. So we took her outside underneath the tree. Well, now it started raining. So now the valet comes out and said, Jimmy, let's go inside. I said, no, we're staying outside. That's it. So um, anyway, we got soaked. And she got soaked. By the time they got to the gate, I'll never forget Randy Morse was, uh, Morse was saying, he says, I know Jimmy won a little cut in the ground. He said, I don't know if he won it this much. You couldn't see the race. It was pouring so hard, and all we saw was wonder again from here, to, you know, just by the wire, here she came. Wow. So uh, that was exciting. That was a different, you know, a different, uh, kind of moment. different kind of a moment. So that was exciting. Here's wonder again with a sparkling effort in the rain at Saratoga to win the Diana by a half dozen emphatic lengths. Was that one of your favorite Saratoga moments, do you think? Probably so, because the story related to it was, you know, uh, I think her... Memories of Silver's race in the Lake Placid mm -hmm. was incredible. Mm -hmm. Jerry Bailey rode her. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. He put her, put her between horses, and she worked her way through and got through and she won. Yeah. Uh, 
Winter Memories is race here were incredible, you know. So there's a lot of good memories here with, uh, with, with those Phillies. Winter Memories, a two and a half length lead, followed by Dream Peace coming down to the line and tap its fly under the finish. It is Winter Memories, victorious again. Winter Memories does it. It's funny because uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Bobby Frankel, he says, Jimmy, do you have any good Phillies this year? Do you have any good Phillies? No, not this year. I said, maybe next year I got it. It was before winter. You know, I said, I think I got one next year. And he says, well, you always have a good Philly. I said, yeah, I don't understand. I don't know why. He said, it's the way you train. I go, so what difference is, what do I do? <laughs> I said, I don't know what it is, but fortunately it's worked out good. And it, it definitely has. Yeah. And coming up, and especially this meet as yes. well, we've had a couple of really phenomenal Phillies. Steve's Guild that won yes. the caress. Thieves Guild has taken over the lead. Free as a bird moves into second. It's Thieves Guild in front. Free as a bird giving chase. Thieves Guild captures the caress stakes. How did Thieves Guild come out of the race out of caress? Good, good. She's fine. She came out of it really good. She's been one of those fillies that, you know, she's been a project from day one. She's had her issues, her physical issues. But when you get her right, like we have got, finally gotten her right, I mean, she's got a tremendous amount of ability and class. She's just a total class filly. And um, like I said, we're really excited about the way she ran here. And then, you know, we got a few more spots picked out for her between, the, between now and the end of the year. And Recepta as well. And I know I talked with you before she won the De La Rose, and you'd mentioned that she really enjoys being fresh and happy yes. going into the race. Right. And you said she was really fresh and yes, happy going really into the race. And, happy and going into obviously, it. she, yeah. she, she won. Ran, she ran huge. Uh, Johnny fits her so well. Mm -hmm. And he rode such a perfect race for her. Uh, it was a little scary there with the foul claim, you know, the mm -hmm. objection. So, but Johnny said, Jimmy, I never moved. He said, I still kept my path and he was good, but but God, she won convincingly. So we're really thrilled with that. Recepted to De Paisi, come into the final furlong together. And on the far outside, a late run from a little bit sassy, it's going to be Recepta. And came out of the race fresh yeah, as well? Fresh as well. We're keep her fresh. Keep her keep fresh. fresh. And, and I, plans for her? Uh, probably the Noble Damsel back at Belmont. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure we keep her fresh. I don't want to run her back too soon, so we want to give her plenty of time. For sure, for yeah. sure. And uh, you're, you have a member of your family that's also involved with the racing, your daughter Catherine. Yes, who true. just graduated from Brooklyn Law yes, School. Yes, she did. And sat for the bar exam. You must yes, be proud. I'm proud of her, and she got a job. That's the best part of it. Will Catherine stay involved with the horses at all? Well, she'll always be involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's any free time she has, she always comes out on the weekend. She helps out. Uh, uh, she's great to have around and I'm proud of her and um, you know but thank God she's you know on a different career path and that uh, we're looking forward to that too. And she obviously wants to practice law and yes, yes. a specific type of law that she's uh, going immigration, to do? Immigration. Immigration law. law. So I think she's had a lot of experience with the people around here that she's grown to uh, feel like she wants to help and uh, so that's a good that's a good way to go. That's great. Yeah. And okay, so in the barn now, you have horses here at Saratoga yes, correct. and at Belmont. No, and no horses at Belmont. No, no, just here. everything here. Yes. And um, you'll go back to Belmont from yes. here. Yes. And you also have a barn at Fair Hill, Fair Hill. Training yes. Center. Right. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about your involvement with your partnership there. Well, we, Justin Nicholson, bought a barn at Fair Hill. And so we've spent a couple of years getting that built up and to get it situated. So, uh, it's worked out well for everything. We have layup horses or freshening up horses we send back down there mm -hmm. uh, because they have a great therapy. Uh, Bruce Jackson's got a great place down there, the hyperbaric chamber, the saltwater therapy, Aquatred. So he has everything there. Mm -hmm. So, and plus the fact is it, it, it's such a um, change for horses that when they go down there, you can take them out to the fields. You know, you have different things to do. You take time. So it's a great change of pace for them, great change of scenery. And keeps those fillies fresh, fresh keeps and happy. Keep those fillies fresh, that's the main thing in life. Keep the fillies fresh and happy. So tell me about a couple of horses that might be coming, up and coming in the barn that are, we well, should watch we for. have a nice filly, a tappet filly uh, called Time in Motion. Uh, that is Philip's family. So, you know, we're back, we're back to the grass with that. And she's coming along well. We look forward to her running good uh, next week. Running next week and yes, been right. training well coming been up Been training to well. Good and fresh, so she's doing well. Excellent. And then we did have a nice filly run uh, uh, last week. Was Hyper Nation. She was third in a maiden special race, and we I think we caught a pretty good filly running in that race too. The Tappan filly, the one of the Ralph Nick's filly. So, um, so we got those two fillies, and we got a couple of colts that are coming up. 
Um, in fact, I have a, a Broken Vow Colt named Cave Johnson. Uh, he looks really nice. And also I have a Colt out of Sewing Softly. Okay. So uh, she was pretty nice horse. Yeah, pretty night. nice. Yeah, she I was, was pretty nice, yeah. Going to ask you, yeah. um, have you trained many that you actually trained their parents? Um, we had uh, actually had one filly out of Sewing Softly, mm -hmm. much rejoicing, and we wanted to stake with her. So she was a nice filly. And um, naturally, Memories of Silver, Winter Memories was her daughter. So I trained her, the mother and the daughter, which is, you know. Incredible. That, that's a neat, that's a pretty neat thing. And yeah. Soaring Softly was a winner for you. The Breeders' Cup. The Breeders' Cup, yes. which you have to be proud of that too, yes, winning the Breeders' yeah. Cup race. Right. Yeah. Here's Coretta, here's Soaring Softly, and Soaring Softly is the winner. Soaring Softly, the queen of the American green, a four-way photo for second among Coretta. Late running Borgia was also right there. Cafe Letty also in that photo for second. The final time here, Soaring Softly, Philly and Mare, Turf Champion, 2.13 at four. Well, thank you ever so much, Jimmy. It's been an absolute pleasure, and we look forward to watching your next few horses run and seeing Recepta and Thieves Guild come back in action. And thank you so much, Saratoga. Have a great day.